So I will talk about uh, an interoperable dig digital twin to simulate spatial temporal photovoltaic power output in cities or neighborhoods uh, in Luxembourg. Before that, I just want to give you a brief introduction about Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. So we are very young. We were created in 2015, and we work across a number of domains, environment, informatics, materials, and also space. And uh, our mission is to, to push uh, frontiers in research for innovation. We also organize a yearly a tech day where we go out and uh, present uh, our work, what, uh, what we do uh, so far only in Luxembourg, but this might uh, spread a bit uh, more. And uh, we have uh, beautiful uh, headquarter sites. Uh, it's an old uh, industrial area which has been transformed into a um, kind of innovation uh, hub uh, in the south of uh, Luxembourg. And uh, you can see here on the uh, here, the country of Luxembourg, tiny country, 650,000 people only as a population and trying to yeah, make some impact as well in the future. And so we, we work across different uh, research areas, so from fundamental and uh, to applied research, some incubation, we do policy support and also uh, train doc uh, PhDs and postdocs in collaboration with uh, universities. And we have, uh, here you can see some, some core technologies we are working on, and uh, one of them are digital twins. Okay, so, um, what's the problem, and why do we need to talk about digital twins? Everybody knows we have climate change, energy crisis, and uh, particularly cities uh, are quite vulnerable to climate change. 75% you know? of the global population lives in cities. 70% of the energy is consumed in cities, so there's really a lot going on in cities. And urban areas uh, play a key role in uh, carbon mitigation and also in the energy transition. And another issue comes up now since things are very pressing, so we need to rapidly implement policies. And this requires quite a bit of resources. So digital twins might be helpful for that as well. And as an example here, Luxembourg's uh, policy goals for 2030, reduce greenhouse gas uh, emissions by 55%, push renewables uh, uh, by 25%, and increase energy efficiency by 44%. And uh, we have only a few le years left until 2030. But cities can also deliver, or can be part of these solutions. In, the, in this case, in the energy transition. So they can become really the new power hubs to generate renewable energy. If we use all the, there are large potentials to, to generate uh, solar-based ele electricity across all available building surfaces. Uh, if we look not only at roofs, but facades everywhere, can also look next to the buildings. Here we focus now more on the buildings. And what's interesting is if we don't have to kind of uh, modify too much the buildings, but we can either integrate it into new buildings, so this building integrated PV, BIPV, or attach it to uh, buildings and call BAPV. But cities also need very high resolution information, and uh, there's a lack of integrated assessment tools. Uh, we have a lot of tools, but we need to bring them together uh, to support evidence-based uh, decisions in cities and to integrate energy strategies into urban planning to test policies and also integrate stakeholders test this together with all the actors in a city. So one of the solutions um, or part of the solution will be digital twins and here you can see an example of geographic urban digital twins. So you have a couple of layers you stick together until you get to the virtual layer, really replicate as much as possible your city. And we try to do this based on open data, you know, 3D city models. We have heard this already in the previous talk, CDGML as a standard, usage of uh, open source geospatial software technologies, a number of them integrated use the OGC standards, and then create with all this an interoperable system which can simulate PV penetration and power generation for an entire city at each uh, built-up surface. 
So how is it used, digital twins in urban planning? So you have your real world here on the top with maybe uh, basically real-time real -time data. Then you have your digital twin city where you test and analyze different scenarios, policies through simulation and analysis uh, with, together with stakeholders and then later use this for an implementation back into the real city can also interact directly in the future with a with a physical environment uh, through yeah real time sensing and uh, actuation so at least uh, we are currently building an urban digital twin for with the application for energy and here i want to just focus on the part of digital twin for building integrated pv or building attached uh, pv so and, uh, the, the steps we are following is uh, to estimate the electricity demand at the building stock, uh, simulate electricity generation potentials for every surface uh, uh, in the city uh, at, attached to, to build up environment and develop scenarios for different PV technologies including some techno-economic parameters like feed-in tariff, lifetime, efficiency, um, power consumption and then select optimal locations uh, for uh, building integrated or building attached uh, PV at the different uh, built up uh, surfaces. And all this implement uh, all these steps uh, into an interoperable web platform uh, with data integration, processing chains, and 3D visualization. So we have created uh, already since uh, quite some time. We are working on this uh, iGuess uh, platform, and this is a uh, general purpose web-based GIS platform where we make use of uh, different types of OGC standards to integrate 2D, 3D data, um, also up to, to satellite, uh, so uh, 4D data, basically space-time, and um, try to always uh, provide with this high-resolution information, for example, for entire, entire cities, so not only go on small areas, but if possible, apply this to an entire city at, at high resolution and then provide uh, uh, scenario planning tools and uh, so on. And as I said, it's, it's based on interoperability standards uh, which are used in smart city uh, initiatives and digital twin initiatives. You can see a bit the, the architecture and uh, um, uh, technologies, open source technologies we are using. Uh, so we have a web uh, front end with a web client uh, where a number of different technologies are used, uh, open layers for 3D cesium, if it comes to dashboards uh, D3, um, then we have a communication through the internet and uh, have, a, have a, a web server backend uh, which runs on uh, Node.js, uh, there's a database uh, connected just for the, for the web framework uh, to store information and then linked to different uh, mapping uh, services which is constantly also uh, updated uh, like for, for mapping, for data services, uh, 3D city GML, KML but also 3D tiles uh, for, for visualization and then for processing uh, at the moment, uh, the web processing service, and uh, which will be updated to OGC API also uh, in the in the near future. And this should be always interoperable, as said, so compliant with all the OGC uh, um, services. But there's another initiative uh, about smart cities, OASC, Open and Agile uh, Smart City Organization. And uh, they are developing also some standards, uh, so-called MIMS, uh, Minimal Interoperability uh, Mechanisms, and uh, they come from a slightly different angle. Uh, they already focus also um, partly on, on linked uh, data and um, try also to integrate. Uh, there's the one MIMS um, uh, specification number seven, which uh, has to do with uh, geospatial um, uh, uh, spaces, uh, and there they try to be compliant and integrate the OG, all the OGC um, uh, um, st standards, uh, basically. But there needs to still uh, be some conversion also in the future and more interaction, I think, to, to bring these two uh, standardization organizations uh, more together. And Well, there is some work, but uh, I think this just gives you a different uh, view of, of this uh, platform where you then can see that uh, you 
cannot only work on energy, but you can work, of course, and integrate other other topics. What we have done in the in the past, sometimes working on on other topics, stick this all together and do your uh, city planning. But back to energy applications. Uh, so here for the energy transition, then you have different applications where you can do the calculations from energy consumptions to savings and uh, then PV uh, potentials. So this, uh, uh, for the digital twin, we, we use the 3D city models and uh, basically coming in as uh, LOD2, city GML, but then they get Im imported uh, into a da database, uh, 3D city DB, where then all the uh, analysis and simulation uh, is actually happening. So this is set up as a distributed uh, database uh, on a cluster. And then we uh, we start uh, the processing, and what we do for um, uh, uh, PV potential simulations is that we take this uh, 3D city model and uh, put, um, in this case, a one meter or half meter grid on top of all the surfaces. We call them hyperpoints, so that then we can, so we take all the, the subsurfaces of buildings uh, apart, address individual walls, dormers, uh, subsurfaces uh, of dormers, put uh, this uh, very dense point grid and then do for each point calculations, in this case for PV, but you can imagine you can use this for other applications and later for green infrastructure or interesting also for daylight access uh, in buildings uh, and other um, or shading, shading effects in general. So this is uh, uh, one of the examples uh, of the 3D city model. Uh, coming in as LOD2 uh, is uh, public data in Luxembourg. We have the entire country in such an LOD2. Uh, uh, it's originating from a LIDAR uh, flight from 2019. And then um, this is a neighborhood in, in South Luxembourg. Uh, and then uh, we start uh, putting a point grid on top and uh, run our um, solar irrid irradiation potential calculations on, on these hyper points. Uh, maybe it's a bit difficult here to see, but uh, each, um, here you can see really individual points. Uh, it's a bit uh, dense and, and not so sharp on my screen, it's a bit sharper. Where you can see really all the individual points uh, uh, have been calculated uh, for solar irradiation, uh, in this case an, an hourly um, uh, a computation every day, throughout the day, every hour, every day throughout the year, and then you sum this up and then you get uh, uh, basically uh, this as a result. So it's, it's massive computation, all done in Postgres, PostGIS, set up in a distributed way, and then uh, you get this as a result, and then uh, you can aggregate this to, to surface areas where you get uh, the uh, yeah, best potential areas on rooftops, but also facades, and then can start selecting and, and run uh, um, PV uh, scenarios and also daily scenarios. So this is what we are currently working on. This is not yet completely finished where we run uh, or will run um, very soon um, daily scenarios where you uh, know how much um, uh, electricity you are generating on the different uh, spots uh, of on rooftops and facades and how much you are going to feed into the grid electricity grid, where then another team, uh, at least uh, the energy team uh, and, and grid uh, team is, is taking care of this data and trying to kind of take care of grid congestion uh, if you have too much uh, uh, power which goes into the grid and, and uh, apply some flexibility algorithms. But this is a bit of a different story and uh, we are not uh, uh, yet uh, there. So I just focus on, on this part. So, and that uh, was it.